I just wanted to piggyback on what Sister Charlene Brown had posted the other day concerning European people knowing who the American Negro, the I.E. and Meridian is on this land. Of course those people know. They know. They know about us in such a way that we should know about ourselves that we really don't. And that's because reconstruction, that that's uh, the constant changing of history, has never ceased. Pale folks know our worth. And when I was reading her post, I remember conversations I had with some great cousins back in the 80s and late 70s. They was talking about uh, working with white folk. Okay. I'm down here in Houston. And back in the 40s, they had a lot of manufacturing going on here and the surrounding communities. And one thing that I found strange was that when I talked to my elders, such as my great cousins, they would describe something totally different than what I was being taught in school, what I was seeing on TV about our people during the 40s and the 50s, even the 60s. Okay? One of the things that they was telling me was that these companies were white-owned. They were white-owned, these manufacturing companies. And they would be filled with Negroes. They might have a couple of, of pale foremans, you know, you know, white foremans, but they were mainly employed by Negroes. And do you know why? Because these people understood us enough spiritually and physically to know by employing us, they was going to be blessed, for lack of a better term, blessed or um, prosperous they knew this because we are manifestors we can speak things into being but these people understood that that's why they kept Negroes employed in their facilities they also understood us on a physical level our people are inventors they are going to invent things. And if it's going to make their ability to do their jobs better and faster, they're going to create it. Europeans or white folks, they understand that. That's why they hired Negroes before they hired their own people. This is not me making this up. This is decades of talking to elders who lived during the 40s and the 50s. I've talked to these people and they was telling me basically the same stuff. Now, when we look at uh, movies that they supposed to be based in history, they paint a totally different picture of Negroes. They paint us as uh, we, we the last to be hired <clears throat> and we don't get paid much. And that is a lie. Now, one of my great cousins, he worked for this company all the way into the 60s. And he had got fired from that company. And you know how he got fired? Or should I say why he got fired? Because that was an unspoken rule. Negroes could not come to work looking, wearing bling bling and looking sharp. They couldn't do that, okay? They couldn't drive new cars to work. 
they drove raggedy cars or they rode the bus. See, those were unspoken rules. Why, you ask? Because white men, uh, company owners, hired Negroes before they were hired their own people. Back to what I was saying. They understand the blessings or the prosperity that your people bring to them. They understood it on the spiritual, your power. And that's why they wanted you working for them. But they could not let their own people know that they valued you more than they valued their own people. When they came down to making money. Nah. They didn't teach that value to their children. Because the moment that their elders retired or died off. And left the businesses to their children. The children filled the place up with who? Other white people. Because the children... Again, we back about programming, you know, reconstruction, reconstructing a different kind of past. And their children were victims of it just like we were. So they was believing that nonsense about they were superior and that they people should come first and all of that. So that's why today. All of those businesses that was thriving in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, 90% of them are gone. They don't exist anymore because their elders did not stress the importance of keeping Negroes employed within those companies. They didn't stress to their offspring the importance of doing right by Negroes and Negroes would bring blessings to them. Now I know this sounds far-fetched but when I was first hearing this um, I guess I was around 13, 14 when they, you know the family would be gathered around during the holidays. The elders would start talking about the past. I just thought that was strange because that's not what they was teaching us in school about the past. They was teaching us that Negroes were running from the South uh, uh, just so that they could make a living, you know, a mediocre living, right? But that's not how it was at all. Europeans or white folk, Eurozards, whatever you want to call these people, They understood your greatness. And they hired you before they hired their own people. Because they wanted to be prosperous. So, like I said, I've been talking to these elders. And I just, again, I was programmed into thinking, just like you, that our folks were lowly. They was barely getting paid. Could barely get to function. But that that's not true. That's how we had communities in which we were thriving. People could retire. Now, if things were the way that they say that they were uh, back in the day, people how racist everybody were, you know, against Negroes, how could a Negro retire well? How? If they was that caught up on hating on Negroes and lynching Negroes. No. This is the story they teaching us now. But when you talk to those elders, hey, they weren't living in no fear. They weren't barely getting by. Now, mind you, that was exceptions to the rule. But in those companies... They filled them with Negroes. They may have white foremans, but the laborers was mainly Negroes. And it was Negroes for a reason. So, 
how this is this what I'm telling you is piggybacking on what Sister Charlene Brown said about uh, Caucasians knowing who we are in this land. I also knew that we was the ancient ones, we was the blessed ones. And to subdue us and use us like batteries was the agenda. We come over here, we subdue these people, and we'll be able to pimp them. What's not to understand about that? A smooth-handed pimp don't mind his ladies benefiting from their labor. He know as long as they benefiting, they're going to work even harder, making him even more money than if he was beating them upside the head. That's just common sense. And that's what they have been doing on behalf of the American Negro until their children came along and were greedy and lacked the understanding of how their elders were prosperous with the help of Negroes. Think about it. I just wanted to piggyback on what Sister Charlene Brown had posted the other day concerning European people knowing who the American Negro, the I.E. Ameridian, is on this land. Of course those people know. They know. They know about us in such a way that we should know about ourselves that we really don't. And that's because Reconstruction that that's uh, the constant changing of history has never ceased pale folks know our worth and when I was reading her post I remember conversations I had with some great cousins back in the 80s and late 70s they was talking about uh, working with white folk okay I'm down here in Houston and back in the 40s